did I ever tell you about at school? Well, when I was born, I had a big head, you know. And the the children at school, you know, how cruel they are. They used to pick on you and call you fatty and big head and whatnot. When we went to the, the from the junior school, the middle school, we had to wear a uniform. Well, they couldn't get a, a cap to fit us. So, uh, <laughs> my mother got the uniform, and I was the only one basically that didn't have a cap. No, she went on a shopping spree with me two aunties to London one weekend and she come back with this cap and I tried it on and it fit us. She had getting it from a, a, a school a, a shop that sold school clothes and you could buy the badge at the school and so me I got the badge and my mother sewed it on the cap. And of course I was ever so proud of having a cap like everybody else to put on for school. But the young ones used to get grab it off me head and thread about the schoolyard and I got my cell right upset one day and she says have they been picking on you again I says aye well I was broken hearted because I'd thrown my cap up, up in the gutter but the caretaker got it out the gutter and what and I, it was all wet out of putting me pot and what and she says oh just gone upstairs soon she says I'll tell your dad when he comes in from work so I went upstairs and about no I went by my father come upstairs and he says, they've been picking on you again, Neil. I says, aye. I says, Carl is fatty and big and whatnot. Or he says, technically, no, it's a cruel man, children at school. He says, anyway, your man wants a stone of potatoes from the shop. Will you go and get them? I says, aye. She, I, I says, has she got a bag? He says, no, just put them in your heart, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, just put them in your heart. You better. <laughs> 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 well, you know, that, that, that one I tell you about me father was a good one at the uh, crematorium. Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> we, I lost an auntie just a fortnight ago, you know. And yeah, my dad's 87, he's got a bit Alzheimer's. So when we come to, uh, in the remembrance garden, look at the floors and all that, and I says to my son, I says, I says, where's your granddad? He says, I haven't seen him. So we're looking out and eventually found him. And I went now and I says, Dad, where you been? Getting worried about you. Oh, he said, I've been in the toilet. I said, well, you've been a long time. <laughs> she said, nice. She said, I've got me long johns on back the front. <laughs> <laughs> I says, what did you do? He said, oh, I just dropped everything. <laughs> <laughs> I went. <laughs> uh, he left. I could mind my father telling me when he was at school, I was three sets of twins in his class. Uh, the, the couple of twins, he was a twin, my father, twin brother, and two two lasses. And uh, there was a, a guy in his class, he got nicknamed Dumb Tid Jimmy. You know what it was? At playtime, his mother used to come down and shove the Dumb Tid through the bars of the school railings, and he used to suck on it for half an hour. And he, he says, the day he died, he was 77, he got dumped in Jimmy all his life. That's what they call him. Nice nickname uh, to have that. <laughs> oh, I dumped in Jim. Fancy being lantern with that. Uh, so what about the horse and cart? Then? Aye. And there was another character who we used to... Uh, uh, on the sh on the shoreline, you could get cool all my life. I mean, I'm 60 now, all my life. When I've been rough seas, it uh, must be seems a curl comes to the surface which, off shore. Right. And if it's in southeast or in, in the east, the curl with the tide comes up on the shore. It's washed up. People used to have horses with, with carts on, go and get the curl and fetch it up off the shore. And uh, this guy, it was, it was in the local press, local paper. He had swapped his wife for a, a horse and cart. <laughs> and the, when the media got wind of it and went and interviewed him, he says, that horse is a far better walker than my wife was. <laughs> he says, I think I'm getting the best of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of it. I was no money change then. It was just, just a straight swap for, straight the, for the horse. <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger uh, things I've seen when I was a young lad. I've seen thirty horse and carts on that at Leymouth on the beach pulling cool off. Pulling cool off That's how so much cool I was. Right. Right, for a lot of years. 
Uh, well, that's what you used to heat the green hoses. Used to heat the green hoses, used to heat what fires in the houses and everything were, really? were sea cool. Aye. I've been documentaries made with the sea cool. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the people's way of life, they had a caravan, a bit of a caravan park next to Lamewood where they lived. And they had the horses and carts there, and just the way of doing, get the cool and fetch it up. And yeah. Different people would buy it. And, Aye. Mine, it was all hard times when we were young. There's Richard there. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, man. Aye. We only had one pair of socks. We just wanted to watch them in the bath. <laughs> watch them in the, the school, do you? Aye. The cool job, the hot away until the wind was in the southeast. Well, it was north west yesterday, wasn't it? I, I swung along to this side yesterday, yeah. but. We want to tell you. Yes, please. That, that, Just that, tip that one. That, must, that has been cool. Thank you. Uh, George, the other day on Thursday when Ian Ritchie come out of the field, yeah. I was starting my brother in law, and George was standing with him, the biggest mm. lad. Mm. He, lost, he lost his brother was a month ago, man. dropped on deed. Th- Who had was Pi, young Pi? 45. 45. Heart right. attack. He, he had a greyish look there, young Pi, did he? Aye. Anyway, drug do indeed. He got up, got the toilet. You didn't take sugar, did you? No. Nah. And he, uh, As a fuck I see us to us in there, when we were walking for Alcan, the uh, aluminium smelter, he says, uh, you've got to keep fit. You've got to go and jogging and, you know, right. look after yourself and things. Yeah. You fuck he was all jogging, he got no room be a car. Aye, that was <laughs> fucking good luck, wasn't it? Aye. I see us nobody has a fucking ad vote for you. Aye. Keep fit. Mm. Keep fit, aye. <laughs> Should have been fucking faster, you might have missed the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think we'll do when we call these gone? Sit around now, yeah. Yeah, man. When I, drinking tea. When, <laughs> drinking tea. When I had a heart, I had a heart attack four years yeah. ago. Four and a half years ago. Well, when I got myself, I was in intensive care for three days. When you get yourself pulled together, like the, the little GP, he says, uh, do you fancy going to, like, a rehabilitation thing at Ashton Sports Centre? He says, what it's about is, People that had heart attacks will set them up there and like to get them on the route to recovery. Tell them what it like. Wait, oh, I'll tell you the wheel crack. I call it to keep fit for fatties, I said. What it was, we got up you know, twice a week. There was about 30 there, right? My name is Neil and I'm a fat cunt. <laughs> well, this is, this is what I'm leading into. Oh, well, Kath was there. Mossy's oh, wife, oh, oh. Kathleen Snail, and Joshua's wife. So we gans in, gets checked in, and got the seats in the sort of thought you see. Just take a seat, everyone. And I want you to shut your eyes. I thought, oh, what's just gonna what's gonna happen here? And you hear the music come on, it's like the babbling brook and whatnot, and the, the, the wind rustling the trees and whatnot, and this wave's tearing. And you sit like that. <laughs> and you can hear the ripples of the water and what the water fell and whatnot. Next thing I know, she says, wake up, Mr. Armstrong, wake up. <laughs> we had fell asleep. She says, should I say any of that? She says, anyway, turn it off. I was way with the mix. I was in the wet, I fell. I was, so anyway, well, it was about two o'clock in the afternoon. I was doing a bit snoozy and anyway, you know what I mean? So was any, your time? Aye. So she says, we'll, move, we'll put the chairs away and we'll have to do a training in, right? What it was, musical you had to, chairs. Yeah, uh, musical chairs. You had to push yourself off the well ten times and whatnot. Oh, like, oh, some of them, <laughs> some of them were really, really bad. Johnny Stevenson, maybe now they were getting down a bit, and you had to lift it, these weights up and whatnot. Oh, I was pleased to get you fucking yam. I was knackered when I got yam. <laughs> but at the, at the end, you had to sit down again. You had to put the seats back in the middle and get the weather file music toned down the window. <laughs> oh. This is this was for a wine doon period <laughs> for another half hour. I was there two and a half hours. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sitting, you shut your eyes and just think you're in the waterfall, you're in the wood, you're now in the wood. And the birds are singing very quietly, the the winds rustling the leaves, and all this Oh, I was only back off. <laughs> she only had to see her way over again. When she says, well, that's it for the day. I said, fucking thank the Lord for that. <laughs> Tell them what happened when the fucking, they come around the doors wanting place for the fucking... Oh, aye, that's not long ago. My mate pulled up. He 
it helps him with the pigeons sometimes. I see them pull up though, I see the road where I live in the village. Car pulls up, I'm sitting, I've got the telly click down. Well, you, you get envelopes shoved through your doors for put clothing in for the people in Africa and all this, what not. So I get so up in the front door, just as I was walking towards the door, there's a knock on the door. I, I thought, wait a fucking minute, I seen you pull up, man. Here one opens the door, this young lass. With a fucking name on there. And Roger, my mate, was standing in the back of her, you see, he had come across the road. She says, uh, sorry to trouble you, she says, uh, I've got a bag here. Did he receive a bag for to put uh, clothing in for the starving people in Africa? I says, wait a minute. I says, if my clears will fit them people in Africa, <laughs> take it from me, starving. they're not fucking starving, man. <laughs> And she started laughing, <laughs> and Roger started laughing. She was fucking good at nothing, lad. <laughs> and she's walking up the road, got a knock on it, and she's looking at us, and she started to laugh again when she's thinking of what I'd said. She's yeah. got a fucking good <laughs> And Roger says, Boy, you got her there, young and old. <laughs> I says, You can take it from me, they're not you starving, man. You get all Africa, I'm not doing it. Right. They made a one intense. <laughs> they made a good. Well, they weren't fucking starving with all that mate waiting for, for my pants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you? Aye. You've, You've been busy at us, eh? Busy, aye. Aye. And we're getting, worried, stopped. We're getting worried about you. Yes, it's a bit late. The never, day. never stopped. Never stopped what? We had a cup of tea, you know. <laughs> That's funny when the missus always says, what do you find to do at the corner? And he won't. Yeah. I've just been down to dinner, see how he's there. Uh... Watson. Aye. I see a steam, I thought you had had a wobble. I see I was going to buy you a wreath. You're not seeing for a while, eh? Yeah. But he doesn't come now because he hasn't got the, the chickens. No. Oh, that's right, you got the chickens to believe, didn't you? Aye. Well, I wasn't in there, and if he was dead, what? No, he wouldn't have. <laughs> you would have missed on buying him a wreath. Sure, you wouldn't have found you. I would have got me one off, Billy Fool, cheap. <laughs> uh, oh fellas Dennis Dennis is 70 71 or 2 I'm not sure he's just getting married not long ago to have a wife she's about 55 6 something like that who? who? Oh. who? what are you Kelly? no huh? uh, is that a what year? huh? Of course, I thought she was hell of a man. Well, she looks hell of a man. She does. Yeah, she, she does. She looks hell of a man. She looks, she looks Dennis's age. Oh, but she's not just fucking telling him that. Aye. Oh, Wait. Yeah, I don't think she's fucking hell of a man. They, get, they got married. They didn't live together. She lives down here with her father. Like, uh, they've got a block of, like, few houses, you know? I think there's about three or four houses in this. Uh, and she's got, it like, a shop. She uh, does like uh, text pants up, you know, I, like I, for short legged people. I took a pair of pants in, I was just going to take it off, she said, I haven't got enough trade. And he lives up at fucking No Seaton. Ah, uh, it's a rabbit off there. I hang it's it, a tax. It, tax uh, reasons, tax something fill. like that. It's a tax will. The chance to be clean for three or four fucking bands somewhere. <laughs> Oh, when they cut the when I take mine in, the, the stuff she cuts off the bottom, she makes for a lot of sport with it. Uh, make, they make shorts. They, they make pair of shorts for me. I've got the same same colour shorts as I have pants. Uh, I've got all my shorts now. Aye. Uh, Where you live a fucking pair the camouflage ones in? Honestly, you've got no idea, man. They make the bass a six foot length for a two foot leg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, good. Short and say leg, they still got to cut five inches off. All right. Oh, my God, is these? Oh, that is cotton. Uh, they'll walk, like a walk pants in there. I don't know what right. he got me them for. Uh, uh, in the fucking... They'll last a long time, man. Hey, they do. In the last fucking age, is these? <laughs> look, especially look if we didn't need walk. <laughs> That's a fucking look. Yeah? That's about fucking three inches there, and there's still trail them. on the bottom. Oh, that's... I should have weather. taken them to Val. You wouldn't have got them back, man. She says I was a fucking bloke at a wedding. And what the wedding at the the central club, where the central club's right, right. next to the shop, next to that shop. Aye. 
and he quoted the sample and he fucking went out to our shop and he says, can he take his pants up? And he, he says, they're all lying and he says, and I'm keep standing on them. Uh, she says, oh, aye, she says... Well, like, then the yeah, shop yeah, drop him, like. I dropped his pants in the <laughs> shop <laughs> and turned them off. And she just took them off. Aye, nice job. Aye, aye. She says, he was standing there on his own pants. Aye. You've probably seen that before. Oh, aye. Uh, <laughs> fuck with Dennis, man. They come in. He had a bit of a shoot. <laughs> Turn off. Is it? He's got a hot turn. If you have, you have pigeons, you have male, this pair, and your best, your best. That's what everybody tells you to do, and that normally works. But other times you'll get a hen or a cock, whatever, what breeds good pigeons, and it's never been any good at racing. Mm. You know, we've got a hen now, she's, well, she's never been in the basket, but she's chawing and open us. So, you know, if you host to see her, she would be a, a good racer. You know, just that type of thing. And, uh, but as I say, it's normally best of best, and we've found that over the years, they are the ones that they breed your best. Mm. Yeah. And as you were earning four, like feeding wise, normally in the winter we feed like half barley and half like a, a decent corn. So they get like protein and you know, whatever, carbohydrates and all that into them. Builds them up for when we pair them up. So they've got pl plenty of meat on them. There's a lot cry over that our fat. But they're not our fat, man. You get a bit, you know, weight on them. They lay their eggs just the same. It put the weights there for them for when they start feeding their young ones. So they didn't take our much out themselves. And you haven't got as much to put back into them once the young ones is away from them ready for racing, wait. Right? The Lakes of Wars has never been out there, I know, since the season finished, and the season finished in September, and they've never been out the Cree. Now, when we start letting them out, we do it for maybe about 10 minutes in the morning, and they'll drop on trees, they'll drop on the Cree, out. But after a week or a fortnight, we've got them going to Noir again. And then, two or three weeks of that, and then they're ready for training. So they get ready for the race. It's basically about fetching them into condition, isn't it? That's right. Getting them right. That's right. At the, at the right time of the year for when oh. you need, they need to be coming into condition for breeding and racing. Aye. Sometimes, if you're, you're training, you know, you take them away training, we're going in, maybe put a little bit of grit and seed on their boxes. And when they come in, and every day when they've been training, if that's on their box, you find on a Saturday, they're going crackers and they're going straight through the doors, you know. They're looking for that. They're looking for that bit, tidbit, aye. 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 Plus, on the, the weekend, the hens is there. The sexual urge oh, is aye. the greatest. Well, you see, it's the same as your sale, you know, if you think you're going to get yeah. a bit, you know. You, you're, you'll wear that extra 50 foot, wouldn't you? Ah, you hurry home. <laughs> you hurry home. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite psychological, isn't it? It is aye, psychological, aye. yeah. Aye. It's hell. You know, there's knee. Great things in pigeon racing. You've got to have good pigeons. Mm. You've got to have your feeding right. You've got to have what you put in your water. You know, like your multivitamins, probiotics. Everything's got to be right. Your training's got to be right. And then, on a Saturday, you fin do if you're doing it right. Because mm. sometimes, sometimes you could do it, and it didn't come. Sometimes you could do it and take out the places. Uh, you know? It's a lot there as well, isn't it? Oh, aye. It appears to be at times, because uh, some weeks you could bank, you would put your last penny on the pigeon to win, and he'd, he'd let you do it for some reason. But that might not be due to the pigeon. Elements. Uh, just the elements. Mm. I'll tell you some of what happened was, we were 15 points clear for the young boards, and those two races they got. We had scored every race. Sometimes two, three places. And there was another set, uh, another set of lads, the lad who was doing the race, they were 15 behind me. And we had scored every week. The pigeons were good. And then I had an operation on my hand. And that week I wasn't there like for feeding. Because they had these things sorting ways, you know, you, a little bit in the morning and things like that. 
And that weekend, we're waiting on the pigeons coming. I had the, the bandage, you know, you know. We got two. I says, oh, we had, we had seen one gone through. I says, we were stand second and third. Because we had found the other allotments at the quarry. I says, we stand second and third. I says, that should be worth for the averages. When we got with the clocks, the other lad, he had six in front of us. He took the four six places. So there was only one point. They were one in front of it. After that, the way I comes back, feeding the way I feed again, everything done, you know, the normal. Yeah, that's normal for that. And that weekend was second, third, fourth and sixth. So we won, you know. But it just you cannot guarantee it. If, no. if you do something wrong, it shows an effect that you have on your pigeons. You change your routine. Change your routine, aye. aye. It knocks them off. Because as soon as we went back onto the routine, you scored again. they scored again, aye. aye. Same pigeons. Aye, aye. aye. Mine were devastated. <laughs> well, aye, because the way you're flying. Aye. Aye. You just aye. think it's a formality aye. for them to come in. Well, you week. did, yeah. aye. Because you're flying that wheel, you aye. thought, oh, you know. Aye. But it was just what it was. In the morning, we were feeding them like a, a cup full of seed and a cup full of depurative. We had about 50 young ones, you know? And at night time, we're giving them a good feed of a mix. Like, a, well, we, we feed a lot of barley and we, this mix builds them up. So, what my mother had done, it was coming up to the national, you see, where well, the national is about 300 miles for young ones. And he put the heavy corn in all the time. We didn't put the seed and the smell stuff in. Uh, and uh, I believe that's what knocked them off. Because uh, they were used to that feeding all the time. Uh, and then that week it changed. That would be summer, didn't it? Oh, aye, aye. Where well, uh, you're changing the, the, the diet of the boat. We you? ended up seventh and eighth. You know, and it that just should. If that had been the last race, you, it would have snuck out of you. Oh, I uh -huh. mean, pod black. Uh -huh. Pod black. Mm -hmm. You've also got like, <clears throat> if you if your bird's coming 300 miles, whatever you've done, you've got that risk of what's going to happen in them 300 miles. Well, oh, you can think, aye, you know, aye. Really like, well, it's it, interesting. It, it could be birds of prey, like some peregrines attacking them. We've lost, we've lost some good ones this year. Aye. And, you know, just hex, wires, clash, clashing with that. Uh, I'll tell you what happened, weren't you? He could verify, like these, what we're putting up with here. There was six of us stand, and we had the, the young pigeons out on the ground, and we're standing around them, you know, and a hack come between with, and hit the, hit the young one with one of the lads. He, said, he was from here to the outfit, you know, and he, like, went. And they are up and away, uh, you know. But they're not frightened. No, yeah. No. And that's the sparrow hack where they kind of catch them on the wing. They're not fast enough. Uh, but you see, then coming up the country, you've got your peregrines. Uh, Why well, peregrines? They reckon on the flat. The peregrine kind of catch a pigeon. But when you watch them come down like uh, at a two hundred mile and no one to hit them, <laughs> they did for the, you know, once they hit the back, they did. It breaks the heart, say, I think. My, my brother's walking for the Sultan of Qatar. He's a, he's a falconer. He's in charge of the falcons in Qatar. Who is? My brother. His brother, Jeff. Jeff. And he breeds peregrine falcons for the hunt in Qatar, <coughs> in Pakistan. <coughs> what the day the gun, the Sultan and his entourage. Against the various countries hunting. The jet will gun out fortnight beforehand while the all the clubber the falcons and what have you and the sun will gun out. It's uh, Prince Al Khalif at the minute. And they gun out and they hunt for a couple of days with invited guests. And then they gun away and do what they're doing. All his gears packed up and fetch back the quarter. Well, Jeff's been, he's been up there two years, setting his breeding program up, breeding the, the place. It's like, it's like the Marriott Hotel, the place. I've got photos up here, I've got DVD up here. 
and it's all marbled out and each each falcon has got its own guy there and as soon the as that Filipinos aren't they uh -huh. as soon as that falcon passes a drop and her makes a mess it's cleaned up and cleaned with a dead old wipe and all this honestly you could eat your dinner off the of the the area no get, getting back to the it's it's what when they got out with the peregrines they're, they're hunting a, a, a species called grown quail and and hoobaroos these hoobaroos is like lapwings it was rich says the peregrine has got to be weird now and it's got to be flying you see because he's not keen at taking stuff off the bottom because the peregrine when he's in attack mode he'll come up and under with his talons and, and Take the quarry and the and fetch it down. No, that's that's why they're hunting these this particular species. With well, the conflict, they used to fly in Afghanistan, but the conflict with well, where the conflict is, they're going into Pakistan now, and they've got permission to PX and the pawns for the, the hunt this particular species. And but they've set a big big breeding program up. It's the size, it's the size of Belgium. This area, what they've set up, and. The six brothers of Al Hoyd, a couple of million a piece in. And the breed Hoobaroos now, like the breed pheasants in England. Pardon me. This one of the top painters in the world, this Andrew somebody paints wildlife elephants and this, that, and other. He's doing so somewhere. Jeff had bred a peregrine for him, and he threw them. He kept. He didn't. There was no money changed hand. He painted. He painted one of Jeff's peregrines. If Jeff's, my brother's got it on the wall. It's a big painting, which was valued about eight hundred pounds. So there was no money changed hand. The Sultan wanted this guy, this painter, the Ganut, that paint his top bird. The top bird of Ria gets painted and it's hung on the walls of the toilet and the fucking Sultan, wherever. Well, you're talking, but he's got 120 boards flying. So the, if that's the top falcon that year, you get some painted up. So he invited this guy, Andrew, fetch a guest and stop for a week. I'll take you hunting and whatnot. You can see the board, take photographs of the board and paint it for us. So he took Jeff, you see. So uh, they landed at the, the airport. There was limousines waiting, waiting for to pick them up. Way back to this massive hot air, which the, the, the salt moons, anybody that he invites, or if he invites Zach or Neil or anybody to stop at this hot air to impress them, this is a massive job. This the next day, there's four brand new Range Rovers pulls up. Jeff gets into Word, Andrew gets into the other. The Sultan's are already in Word, and he's soon Prince Hamdams in the other. And we've got the soon roof soon. There's a guy in there with two. Peregrine Falcons each. The driver away into the desert. There's a team of trackers in brand new Range Rovers, right? They are out tracking the Hoobaroos. We've got the white tatties. Come in, Z Victor One. Come in, Z Victor One. The group, group, here. group of Hoobaroos. <laughs> and and <laughs> Jeff's crying. <laughs> What's that, a lot of boot? Two miles. A lot of Two mile away, there's a group of hoobaroos, like a group of pheasants or a group of partridges. So they get there. Also, in with Prince Hamdam is the top filmmaker in Qatar at the time. He's going to make a film at Al is Gannon, right? So they can see the dignitaries all over the world. They've got that heat screw doing, man, like everything else, with the horse race and the real kick and caboodle. This will be the, the main place to go and hunt and we are bored. If you're anybody that's that's involved with falconry, you'll get away here to hunt through time if you've got the money. So that's why they've set this breeding station up. It's them, polytunnels, guns for miles, just covered in mesh and netting. And they breed them in them and then they release them at various dates, just the same as the pheasant. In England, right? So they do here. And the Hoobaroos, see the tracking vehicles, these are the vehicles. <laughs> so the stop, the Sultan lets it, one of his peregrines away, you see? The filmmaker's got the city cameras going all the time on this, see? 
Texality, two days the day in it. So they've, they've, it gets away, and they, they've got it. They've got Salukis what chase the Hubaroos up, you see. And anyway, boards waiting on. Well, these, if you understand, when you release pheasants in England, they're like they're like chickens and bunnies are tame because you've been feeding them. Well, it's the same with these Hubaroos that were just whacking around. Well, the peregrine was going to get it, and was, if you've ever seen a cockerel, two cockerels fighting, you know, they're kicking each other. These Hubaroos are trying to kick the peregrine. Because they weren't wild, they were tame. So they won't get much of a display. It was, it was so anyway, they put that to one side. But they did come across the wild, some wild hoobaroos, which got a bit of elevation and, and they got a good strike with the peregrines, you see. Anyway, when they completed what they wanted to photograph, the, the, the sultan wanted to see it. We haven't got a DVD. Because we're going to be out here for four days, you see. They've got tents and everything was all set up for them. Get set the way it is. See that helicopter? I knew, look, we want a, we want a DVD recorder. Uh -huh. Two helicopters come, lands. The Prince Ham down, what well, Jeff says, he went on, he's starting them. They sent the helicopters, thought you're 40 miles away at the fucking somewhere. To Curry's to get two DVD players. <laughs> they come back with the DVD players, click them on, and they put the DVD in. And they're like, wow, fucking full of it, he says. Couldn't believe it, man, what was going on. Fancy fucking getting a helicopter to go and get your DVD. Thought he put a DVD player from Curry's, you know, <laughs> 30 miles away. He says, honestly, good, nearly he says, you've seen all. But he. But he's reading with that job, isn't he? Still in touch with him. Well, you still keep in touch with him a lot. Yeah, he was in more house last night. He just lives beside me. He's busy building a project in Scotland for a who for to establish a hundred peregrines up there. He's he just got a little telegraph pools he delivered last week with a wagon. And they're, they're going to build these big flight pins. Money's no object. Money's not a fucking problem. So is he doing it in this country for him? What he's going to do. As, as some good breeders in England, he's going to use the pains as what they call hacking pains for to let the when it's took away from its well, like an incubator, as new anyway, them use them for you take the eggs away from the peregrines and the lanners and the sierra falcons, different species, and you, you incubate them, take them with incubators, the brooders, hand, hand. hand rear them <laughs> so they're imprinted and then. To grow on, as you would get a six week old pheasant pool and grow it on a shooting standard, same with the mm. falcons. And you put them in these hacking pains, you see. Uh, so they kind of touch each other, but on separate pains, compartments, because they would eat each other, these cunts mm. like. We know what it is, they, they, they insult the, what do you call it? The semen. Aye, the. There's no you know, this, up, but you know what I mean? Oh, it's, oh, it went to Jemima Parry Jones in Wales, who was a, one of the top falcon exports in the world, yeah. right? She's got a breeding station. She she, she set up a one in America and a fowl fell through and tits up. And she come back to Wales. Now, Jeff had three females and he was he was wanting the artificial, the, the tassel he had, the male he had, wasn't doing his job. So he wanted some semen. He was 50 pound a shot, this fucker, you know. Excuse me. So he found her. He says, I'll send you some up. That's why he come to New Wigan, because it's full of thick full semen. Full of thick eye. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent for this fucking semen and he artificially inseminated the head. She laid four eggs and three of them were four ale, right? So he. He got his foot and thinking he doing Jeff. He got tagging this lad, cause Jeff's developed a, a, a way of train boards by using a kite, a box kite, you see, getting it up a thousand feet with a lure and he's, he's didn't all that. Oh, he gets loads of visitors from Murray and Alawa. But anyway, when he, the, the semen job, he thought, fuck, that's a, that's a good money maker, that. So, he had three years at my mother's house. My mother, she, she died a couple of years ago, but I was four years on the side of her house. 
because he had the reason his own, he didn't have enough. So I went in one I was going to hang every night to see my mother, just for 10 minutes, a couple of tea and whatnot. She says, what's he up there? Yeah. I says, who? He says, well, Jeff. She says, he's been in there a couple of minutes. I says, I can see. So I got hands over. I says, what are you up there? He says, come here, young, have a look at this. You know, I, I fucking bulk. You know, I can bulk. The, yeah? Oh, you know, the fucking hat he's got on. Yeah. He had a fucking a hat on, made with a fiberglass, and it had a rim on, like that, too. Right around, like that. He says, what's this fucking tassel, this cock? So he gets the fucking hat. See, it's hanging on the side, and said, here he. And he puts a cunt on, like that. He goes, he goes, <laughs> the fucking tassel jumped off the male peregrine and it shagged his head and the semen's running down <laughs> the fucking hat like that, right? <laughs> so he takes the fuck off, he's got a syringe in his pot, takes it out and he syringes, puts hat down on a bit table thing and he syringed it up. He says, that's another 200 pound. That's for what shots in there for this. I says, who often do you do that? He says, fucking three times a day I'm doing it now. <laughs> he says, I've got him born in Nagat with shagging my head. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take me long to fucking cut onto that. He started saying that all over the country. He was saying that the fucking France. Aye, aye. 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 So he's setting up this thing up in Scotland. Aye. But when does he go over to Quattar? He's back here for the Christmas. He just come back last week. He's back here for a fortnight. I'd love to do a story on him. On Jeff. Mm. Aye. He leaves the boys over there looking after them. He's like in charge of all him. He's got a real broad Geordie accent as well. <laughs> well, you oh, know, he's, 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 he's the same Brilliant. as us. Brilliant. Is uh, anybody in in Europe, even America, know that now's out of Woodfarnley, now's Jeff Armstrong? He, he got an aid years and years ago. Uh, and he gets fucking people from hell on. I'd love to see what, 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 Who we got to now? There's something to quote. It's, it's, it's a fucking interesting story, like. Well, he was in the Sunday Purse. Have you heard of the Sunday Purse, the paper? Scottish one. That's it. There was a double page about two months ago in there about him. Right. Right? Of course, that, that'll not go like so. You could, you could make a good article out of it. I wish I had it here because I, I learned it. I mean, well, got to understand, as you know, that qu these guys of Qatar now are the richest men in the world and out the day is doing right, you see? Mm. Now, what it was about was about five years ago, uh, he got a phone call from a guy in the Midlands. Now, this guy for Jeff, he says, Jeff, he, he got any hands above 16 inches. Now, these Middle, these Arabs, they like big hands mm. for big quarry, you Bigger see. Board, you Bigger see. board, you see. Stronger board. He said, out of an hour. He said, how many are bred? He said, I've bred seven this year. He says, will you get back? He if you've got any. He says, the heat felt that for the certain Qatar is coming over two, two weeks' time or something, and he's wanting to purchase any boards above 16 inches. So anyway, he says, well, I can have a look. He says, now, so he had two 18-inch boards while he had bread. Phone him back, he says, I've got two. He says, what do you want for me? He says, well, I'll take a thousand pound a piece for them. So, because they command big money, you see. Mm. A thousand pounds an hour, if you've got no. fucking billions, not right. millions. Right. It's not even You know what I mean? It's not a, it's it's a tip. It's not. Yeah. So anyway, good long story short, about a month went by, in this fucking limb, we were pulled up and saying my mother's, right? Jeff wasn't in. Me, Jeff lives with us, say, the road from my mother's. This fucking stretch limb, we were pulled up. Because I come from, every night I was going to lang, I always did. If, make sure she I, was Make sure she was airy, because she was getting her in years and what. She was still active. She says, you know, I guess we have fucking, we, we have had here the day. I says, we. She says, we, this big, big, big black car pulled up outside. And, and somebody come to the door and, I I see Jeff Armstrong. She says, "Oh, wait a minute, come in soon, come in." That's where you. Yeah, yeah. Come in soon. I'll get. I'll, I'll phone. He's out of the road. So just enough for me. I'll phone out of the road. Jeff, that's somebody here in a big limo. The Sultan was in the fucking limo. This was his fucking driver. 
Zu Tuck um den Schür in der Gier. Oh, I want him, I. I. Whatever you want, I'll pay for them. All right, look, okay. yeah. And they've got to untag and, right? And different things. Right now, what what he said was <coughs> his two nephews will come to Newcastle University. Just In the. Out of now, when it was. When did the fire up? In, the, in the September. September. The, September. Aye. So. When they came, would you take them out? Oh, well, here with a falcon. Jeff says, Oh, I will, I need one. I've, I've got to learn that in technology. So, anyway, a few months went by. The M2 boards went away at the Quator. A few months went by, and he got a phone call. Hello. <laughs> Hello, is that Jeff? Mr. Jeff? He thought it was one of them fucking fern places. I know. Where did you there, Mojo? He says, aye, who's that like? He says, this is such and such, Prince Hamdam's nephew or something like that, you know. Uh, you, take we, you take us out with peregrines. Oh, all right, aye, 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 okay, give your phone number and I'll phone you back. Right, okay, yes, so gets the fucking lad's phone number. What it was... There wasn't two of those, three of them, three nephews. The well at Newcastle University, just getting signed in, they had this massive house at Rulins Gale. They each had their own cook, right? So Jeff arranged for the gun through, he took two boards through with a Land Rover. He had arranged, you got now where they lived, went to the house, took them away hunting. They got, they got, Couple of partridges or something, they were all the moon, oh please. But the night time he come along, he says, What a fucking dear I've heard of them fuckers a dear. I says, Who? He says, Them fucking Prince Hamdam's fucking nephews, man. He says, I gans out the ruins gale to pick them up. He says, I had to have a meal. I had to have a full fucking English breakfast. He says, They are eating. The three of them were in the same house with three chefs and they all had something fucking different. They didn't want the same stuff. He says, you want to see the setup, man? You want to see the gear in the house? He says, I had to fucking start. He says, I already had a fucking bait at this end. He says, I had to start because you upset them if you didn't eat it. Oh. So he says, I had to put on it. He says, we didn't get away. I would have fucking living o'clock with the boards. He says, get to where anyway. Has a good day. And he says, uh, Comes back, drops him off, invited in for tea. He says, no, no, I want to get away back. And you, no, no, you must have a meal with us. He says, no, no, I want to get away and get the board sorted back, back home. No, no, you must come in. You've been very good to us today, Alice. The next week, I kid you not, the next week, this fucking wagon pulled up at my mother's. Inside was a leather-bound fucking desk. In two seats, them fucking seats. What you when Lizzie guns out the fucking quit on, he's she's sitting with the prince, the, the big we'll yellow, yeah. two of them in the fucking wagon. She knocks on the door. We've got a delivery for Jeff Armstrong here from uh, that's the delivery note. Look, it was from these fucking prince, these young princes because he had Jeff had made him put his cell out that day. Mm. They sent him these presents. He had nowhere to put the photos. <laughs> Who's was our little? The hoose is our boss. A little, he says, because I come along from war. She says, have a look in the console. I kind of fucking get moved. She says, look at the gear that's come the dear for him. So I go in. Here's Rob. So, How are you, Rob? All right. <laughs> oh. So anyway, I'm telling about old Jeff. Oh. So when he took them... Sheik's fucking peregrine with the boards. <coughs> the next week, wagon pulls up with these presents for Mr. Jeff. Uh -huh. It was a leather desk, beautiful desk. Oh, and two of these seats, you know, with the sit on, you know, the fucking high bag gear. <laughs> and I come down, <laughs> come, I come from work, and one like me was. She says, no, I guess we've been the gear. I says, who? She says, this wagon pulled up with, with some furniture for Mr. Jeff. 
I said, where is it? And she says, can I look in the consort? I can I fucking get in? Uh-huh. And it was this gear in the consort, you see. He was away. So anyway, it comes when I'm sitting on a cup of tea with my mother. I'm saying, well, what are we going to do with that? You kind of get to the, into the yard to get the fucking bin out. She says, well, we've got anywhere to put it. So anyway, here he comes. He says, oh, what have you been getting here, mother? She says, it's not mine, it's your fucker. It's come with a wagon. Oh. It's off them lads. You did. You took Peregrine another week. He says, Christ, well, he's, had computers and also he's, had, gifts he's had everything his gift oh. sent him, man, and he, he you just kind of see it. Oh, I've, he's, I've, he's doing well now because I'm doing telling him <laughs> Zach's wanting to do an article f- oh. for you know, a but oh. well, you know what he's like. Oh. What's he like? It'd be a fucking great article, it oh. would be. Right. Uh, so, anyway, has he got an email? Ah, he has, but Divin, that's really good asking me. I would, uh, I've got a mobile. Mm. That's another fucking thing that you was asking him. I would have to f- this is a tough question. You're on fierce. Can I look Jeff Armstrong and see him stand with two arrows? Aye. Sure. About a month, about a month goes by, he says, <coughs> you know, can we take them lads for it and they've never shot rabbits coming up the wheels? <coughs> I says, if you want. He says, well, let me on a Saturday when you're not walking. I says, all right. When it came to the Saturday, I couldn't go for some reason. I was walking at the garden centre at the time and I had to get to walk. Anyway, I found him at 8 o'clock. I says, here, in Saturday morning. I says, I've got to get to walk. Look, I says, I'll go and get the ferrets. Give the ferrets. He let us sort the job out with them. Right, OK. I says, mind, when you come back, I want them ferrets fed straight in so I can get them into the hutches because he was a twat like that for leaving them in the boxes all night mm. you see he was finished with me he wasn't bothered about them so anyway I comes back at two o'clock the ferrets was back at my house I thought fucking hell what's happened here I can't see the same pardon me I said what's happened with the fucking ferrets you shot sure back he says well you know how to carry on when you get into the house you've got to sit and have a meal he says I found Rob Morton mm-hmm. Fancy gang ways, take these lads who shooting rabbits. We're going to get to Hexham where there's grass fields, row. Mm-hmm. How? Ah, Hexham. So, anyway, he says, Me and Rob Gans are And he says, Picks them up. But before we picked them up, it was the full English fucking breakfast to tackle again on the Saturday morning. He says, We get sat into a mean Rob. He says, Right, we're ready. They had a morning suits on. He says, honest to God, he says, they had these fucking suits on and these thousand pound shoes on again for it. He says, anyway, we'll get some at the Land Rover and get away at this job. And he says, I explains, look, one there, one there, main ribs in the middle, put the ferrets in, rabbits will come out. If a rabbit lands that way, he shut that. He shut that, right? The other lad will hit the weight. And he'll get a shot afterwards. Right, you're okay. So the fucking rabbit comes out. This this <laughs> lad misses it. Another rabbit comes out. He shuts it. They start dancing in the field. <laughs> Doing the fucking Arab dances and whatnot. That was it. Time to celebrate. They're back to the Land Rover. And they had took the three cooks and all. Because we each got a cook each. And they started cooking a fucking dinner on the back of the Land Rover with the tailgate doing. And he, Jeff says, I was up there here with the country. He says, we spent my time eating fucking food and we did for it. <laughs> he says, at the time, one of the fucking forage laid up. He says, I was standing like a cud for half an hour waiting for it coming out. He says, they were fucking shivering by then with his, it was a little, little bit snack snack oh. away now. He says, they just got the fucking thin suits on the short, had the tire and everything. He says, they were fucking blue with the car. He says, had to come in with them. All. He says, they were giving it this, you know. He says, so I was here at two o'clock. The came in there. The shot were the one with the moon. Didn't they? The couple yeah. were shutting, weren't they? <clears> and there. Uh, Two of the lads from here, Tuck's young and fucking Tigger. Aye. They supplied them with the, they got the tents and everything for them, you know. Aye, aye. She says, well, we want some meat and things like that. They ended up with a fucking half a coup. Oh, Jeff said you've seen that spit. Aye. You know, he says, you've got no idea what it's like. Honestly, honestly, he says it's embarrassing oh. when he got over there, man. Yeah. He says, the, 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 
I mean, he's had his, his last hour. He lives with his last Leslie. She's been over two or three times. And the fucking jewellery and whatnot they give out. Money's no object. Money's yeah, yeah, it's, 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 well, they're, they're very, they're very they're generous people. Phone, eh? uh-huh. Aye. They're just treat like one of the family. Mate, that's the worst thing about the amount of... My family doesn't treat me. Oh, Jimmy doesn't take you like that. <laughs> no, I, <don't>. <laughs> I wanted a, a dog for here at the time. We didn't have the Al- Alsatian, but I was a, a, a cool, a couple of cool uh, distributors in Newbegin. One of them had died doing the store yard. And Jeff had said it is, and I was a good God dog if you want him. I says, well, we're going to have a look at him. He says, do not store yard. He says, it's been locked in the cool, in the cool depth of He says, but black a bit. I said, no, man, I will wash him. So anyway, <laughs> we're going to do it. And the, the bloke, he's wanting a good home for him, see. And he was, he was a nice enough looking dog. Till it got fucking dark, man. He was a different dog when it went dark. He was a nasty cunt. So anyway, we get him, we sat him home, fetches him up here. I mean, Stu. I says, you let keep all of them, we'll let her wash them. Because we're a bit kennel here. I says, I'll just, he says, who are you going to wash them? I'll fucking use them, do the years. I'll, I'll shop wash him. So he washes them, gets some fairy liquid on him, gives him a really good washing. The muck that come out of him, he's a different dog when he was washed. So anyway, I says, we'll let her go and ash it and up the pet shop and get a, some dog food, big bag of dog food, seven, eight pound. Fetches it down, mixes some up in the bowl. Oh, it was quite nice. He loved it. So, uh, w- next week, I'm at work. Stu was at work. I'm coming here at night time. Stu was here in the mornings because he was a night shift. And I've seen the shade off this dog. So, on the Saturday, full week later, I says, where are you putting the shade off that dog when you're cleaning up in the morning? He says, I haven't shifted any. He says, I thought he were doing it. I says, I haven't I've fucking seen the shade. He says, we have not seen Ned. I says, mix some stuff up there. So he mixes some fucking stuff up on the side there. Puts it down, he woofs it into him. This, this dog, even that had been eaten at a gallop. You know, he must have been starved a little bit, you know. So he woofs this dog. So about 20 minutes went by. He lifts it, gives it that. I said, oh, there. The forward would get the shovel to clean that up. He had eaten it again, right? And he's licking his lips. He's going to do that in there. I said, fucking hell, that's going to be handy. He's going to fucking eat it twice. <laughs> he's shaking to clean up. He's shaking to clean up. I said, what if he's a fucking good dog game? He says, for fuck's sake, I'm going to be sick. He went the way up. We are still going to be sick. I, I says, boy, a good dog. I says, don't let him lick your hands and whatnot. Do I lick your... <laughs> Keep him up your fears. Sure, one of our mates who's actually dead now. Well, two of Oliver, four of Oliver. We knew we had him. But I had a gate on there. He work come through here and he's shooting. Are you, are you there? What are you up to? I says, hold on, I'll put this dog away. So anyway, I had a heart of the dog. He was having a bit growl, but I had a heart of the dog. And opens the gate. I says, hey, I've got to have him. He's all right. Not touch you. And he goes, ah, he's all right soon. He's all right soon. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. I says, oh, he's all right with you. Look, that's a good dog. And it fucking stood up and it, and it put its two front legs on two of his fierce like that. And it was licking his fierce and what that time. And I looked at Stu. Stu Gans. Right in the Oh, if I, if I told him what he was doing, he would have fucking, he would have punched what the fuck on it. I was licking him his gun. Give away your big soft shade. Get on your big soft shade. And, yeah. and the lad died. And he, to this day, he never fucking found out about that dog eating, his, eating the shade, mate. Remind me of not to have a cup of coffee when I come next <laughs> <laughs> Guy. I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he got loose. The dog got loose. It was on a thin chain. And Brian, who had the garden next door, he had the glasses, the black vein glasses. He had a few hands, man. He had about 20 hands. I come out in the morning, make, do before I went to walk, make sure everyone was there. The fucking dog was lying in the kennel. Lying fucking asleep like that with a chicken and half eaten. I says, Oh, where's he getting that from? Look next door. All the chickens were dead. Next door in the next good door was garden. I says, Fucking hell. Right, I don't know what's going to happen here. So, anyway, I 
clicked him back on the chain. He had snapped the chain. I put a D-link in, cut the chain back up. Mate there, I comes from work. Brian is in the garden. I said, oh, Brian. He says, well, oh, he says, I've had some bastard in here. They've killed all my hands. I says, this morning when I come up, there was a fox running down that fucking garden. The way down the bottom. He says, I knew, I knew it was a fucking fox. I knew straight away it was a fox. He says, I lying. Deed near, look at all these. I says, where? I says, you let to make sure they're locked up at night, nice, Brian. <laughs> like, surely he didn't want us to admit it, did he? No. You can... I don't think I'll go to heaven. No it was like that fucking ferret, wasn't it? Oh. You know what I telling you about yesterday? The ferret, aye. Uh, we went back to the seal. seal. We went to the seal right. in our room. We went to Haswell. Went to Haswell. Two chickens come up, 50 pence. Uh -huh. We'll have them. As you do. Guinea pigs come up. See them. You know, we'll have them. Well, but the cockles, well, didn't we buy a but I cockles? Because what it was about was, as a character in Newbegin, well, now, um, Chicken boo, he had he had getting he had getting these American fighting cocks from Alabama, in England and whatnot, and I had getting one, uh, blue face Billy from Kentucky. <laughs> blue face Billy, aye. He was one of the original cocks, you see. Well, yeah, I didn't want him for fighting, I know, but the hands, the hands were good. He has one. I've, I've still actually got four of the original and good mothers. Good and mothers, you couldn't, you know, for first and and rearing. Anyway, when we went to Haswell, I says, we'll get a few cockles and we'll try them up with Billy and get back. So you see what he's like, supposed to be king of the fucking heap sort of thing. Now, as Richie said there, we'll, we'll get some out of the We'll have a, what, guinea pigs, what, cockles. guinea pigs, cockles. What else? Like so, a boot full. I was a boot full. We a ferret. We bought a ferret, aye. A big white cunt, in it, In a fucking cardboard box. Aye, aye. But we're going to join Sulesby's at Kibblesworth on the way oh. back. And on the way back from Haswell to Kibblesworth, he's crying. I said, fucking no, he's not. Boo, what the... That ferret must be lost. I'm crying away, not fucking Well, he had the I'd chickens just, forced, They can see? just smell them, you know. And, and then the chickens went them. quiet. Aye. And then we had the guinea pigs. <laughs> then the guinea pigs went quiet. Aye. 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 You know? <laughs> and then when we got to Sulesby's, he says, I'll go and have a look. Lifts the boat, you know. Everybody did, and he's lying like a lot of sleep. A fucking ferret will oh. lie with little licking his oh. fucking lips that could. Fucking knock at you now, kill Dean L, that kill him. I says, you fuck, I was going to get some action with the fucking cockerels, then. We've well, got them here, we had to just hurt them in the ferret. <laughs> fucking bag of boot. Oh, hey, good. dude, kill the fucking lot. Yeah. What a killer. <laughs> Uh, oh, it, was a good it was a bad move, really, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, Could you, you didn't pay a lot of money for them. I think we got the ferret for about three pound, and now it was no, you know what I mean. We went, we went back a few weeks later, and we got another half. Do oh, this was priceless. This we went back, me and Stuart the Haswell I had the van at the time, and we bought about six or eight cockles. This was for a try Billy would see what he was like. I had Billy in a big pain in here. So we comes away from Haswell and the fucking red light went straight on the raid on the van. And we're pulling into the nearby, this side of Haswell, and the fucking steam's coming up the radiator. I says, we're fucked. She's blowing a gasket. Still in the heat gasket. Just then, Pinky and Kane pulls in front of in the nearby. What are you doing? I had sent Stuart to see a fucking lake over there in the fields over there. I had an empty pickle jar in the back of the car. I see he's gone away with that pickle jar, fill it with water, <laughs> in the engine. Right. So, Kane and Jim gets out the fucking car. What are you doing? I says, as soon as you guess what's going, I think, or a cork plug. But I says, he says, where's Stu? I says, I see him where? And all the people, it just seems that big. I says, this is where to fill a fucking pickle jar. <laughs> he says, wait. Well, it, when he comes back, we'll put a towel we up on. We'll towel you at the new begin. Ah, oh, says Chapman. So the fucking match was on. We, had to come, we couldn't come through the tunnel, obviously. What again? It was about a six foot long the rope that was on. I was shaking myself because I was in the town vehicle in my. Anyway, gets we back in the begin about 20 to 3, right? I says, Do you want a cup of tea? We'll say walls. Pulls up, we'll say walls. Do you want a cup of tea? No, no, we'll get away. Well, they had stuff in their car to get put away. I said, we'll have a cup of tea and I'll go and light my fires and get the P100, the pickup, and we'll put the gear on, take it to the lockman, me and Stu. Right. I says, 
can fucking boil a kettle and make a cup of tea and I'll go and get the van. Pick up. So I drives around the block with a pick up, takes the stuff with my van, who was he was parked up near Kaput, puts it in the back of the P100. There's a cup of tea. And we're coming up here then, you see. So he comes up the estate there, where Hunter's Lodge is, gets see far over the road, at the bottom of Hunter's Lodge Bank, and she fucking cuts out to crooks it. I said, Way lad. I says, because Jeff was awful for not putting petrol in at the time. He was walking on a boat, he had his own boat. Seeing it, I see the bass as if gives that. I was fuming. Pushes it to the side. I see the steel, keep an eye on it. I can get my father. Well, my father had a Montego car, right? I see, I can get him, take the can up to the garage, get a gallon of juice. So I walks back up the back of the end. My father's in. I says, hey, get a petrol can. I says, that P100's chocolate it inside the school. He says, well, it's got petrol in. I just put petrol in yesterday, man. I says, wait, well, it's chucked it, I'm telling you. Oh, gets a petrol can. Gets it the P100. This, by then, is about 4.30, 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Gans done, bottom of the street there. And I can see there's traffic. Well, at that junction, <laughs> you know where you went in the junction, look at that. Right. There was 20 cars at this side, and there was 20 at that side. And the fucking car was on fire. <laughs> the P100 was on fire. And Stu's halfway up on his large bank where all the boxes with the chickens and what are in. I says, what are you doing? He says, when he left us, I was sitting. And he says, I'm looking at the bonnet and the fucking paint's run off the bonnet. What had, what had happened? He had the bonnet laid. Aye. It had went down, it was touching, touching the battery terminals. And it shot and I'd short it out. He says the gun boss in the flames. <laughs> Just then de, 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 the fucking fire brigade pulls out the off and the out with a hammer and the fucking bang the windscreen the the fucking stuff the firm and everything's gone the f- <laughs> So anyway gets the fucking it was uh lives next door to John that man. Or did. Dick name. Step to her. Step. Steps. Three, three cars back. <coughs> I'll take it around to your house still. I've got a rope. I says, right. It was dripping with fucking water and everything, you know. I says, me father, I says, we'll take it back around to your house. Pull your car to one side. I says, Stu, put all that stuff into me father's Montego. Boxes was in the boot on the back seat. I'll never forget the look of my mother and more Jill and Norma's faces when we were fucking pulled up. It was dripping with water out of the car. Well, I was kind of steering it, stepped to us, just taking his time up the back lane, you'd see. And I pulls up and we had to like, push it onto the a little bit outside my mother's house. And the water out at the window again. They, they come out, what's happened? I says, there was bosses into flames when I was got there. So anyway, I says, we follow. We'll take the Montego up and get that stuff put away. But I says, I noticed the window, that window, the driving side window, it stuck. Uh, just leave it, I'll, I'll see it when you come back. So he comes up here, we'll get the fucking stuff put away. See it as a twat, but then. Oh, Gans God. back up to him. My father's in the corner, he says, come sort this window. He come out, he gans it, out gans. Boosh! The fucking window burst into a thousand pieces. Well, that was the three that day, wasn't it? Aye, Mine, his P100 in the Montego. Fucking... He had a cow fucking quick glass or something, something like that, you know, to get <laughs> put a new wind in. But then it was about seven o'clock, I was up to here with a bastard. <laughs> My, what a dear we had. When we went to Haswell, you know, I was an auctioneer there. Boy, you've never holding out like it. I hurry. I used to cry, you know. These these not used to gan. And they would buy pigeons. And he used to say, How are lads? There's a pun for these, man. He says, Save the lives, he says, because they're just gonna eat them. <laughs> and these would sit on in the front. <laughs> he did, you know. <laughs> right now. He says, They buy all the young rabbits and things, you know. He says, And they eat them all. He says, Save their lives. Oh, <laughs> Boys, Save the lives. He would that, fetch yeah. he would fetch a pair of boards up. This is the last ones of these. Aye. She says, there's no me, I mean, Last she says, canaries. you know, so sell them, you know, and maybe there's a couple of lots or two or three lots for their own, there was another couple. 
Ah, it's yours. I never liked them other ones anyway. It's yours. These are better. These are better. <laughs> uh, these are better. Uh, it was magic. He could sell stuff just, uh, you know, with uh, a crack. Uh-huh. If, he knew, if he knew you wanted it, he would get you. Oh, uh, I would. Uh, 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 that's it. You know, if you see it, hurry, I want that pair, such and such. He would not have done for you. Doing for you. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, it was yeah. good like that. Oh. <laughs> you forgot what you used to go and we'll buy out. Out. We'll come back with two little dogs, me and Stu, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, you fuck, uh, This laddie was working about with little puppies he's in his pocket, they were tiny, they were like. I says, Oh, that's him. He says, Six weeks. I says, They can't be. He says, Oh, no. Stu says, Oh, I'm going to have one. What do you want soon? Ah, uh, tenner. He says, give me one of them. If I took him, he says, I will take that for the bands of two lassies. Lassies were about eight and ten or something at the time. You fuck, I grew up to be the nastiest dog you've ever met in your life, this dog. <laughs> he gave it away to his grandfather and he started biting the grandfather. Oh, I don't know what happened in <laughs> the end. But the one I had, what I fetch him, it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't settle because I had the, the Jack Russells at the time. I had two Jack Russells. My father says, let me hear that, good night, it. give it to your father. I says, go on, you have it. You know what, gives the ten I hit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but they thought the wall to me father. It'll be for the glass. And for the <laughs> <laughs> They thought the wall to him, man, you fuck out of it. Indeed, about here, that, that little puppy, but the fuck, I still got all that nasty little thing. <laughs> and then, you know, when they're little, like that, and they, oh, the Yorkshire, the pedigree Yorkshire Terriers, but we haven't got the Peters or not, we. I said, wait, what, what do you want for a fucking tenner? They weren't Yorkshire Terriers when they grew up. <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking everything. They were Heans, Beans, and everything. I was 50s in the 80s. Out there. I could. Out. out. Mm. Right. Live, there was livestock made out. It was an education. Yeah, about the, uh, what do you call him? Scorpion, a black scorpion there, weren't you? Uh-huh. Up here at Tanaford, in the tank. Tarantula, everything it in really there. Good. Yeah. I've seen them uh-huh. there. And I fetched it to him because we were young and hot. See, he, he wanted some you know, exotic want type exotic of thing. Exotic, different eye. So I took him at him and I says, here, we used to get crickets. Uh-huh. You know? Uh-huh. Well, who sounded like the fucking jungle? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crickets at night, I mean, they still do. Ah, you can't remember. We used to have to break our legs because the fucking scorpion wasn't uh-huh. fast enough for the catch them, you know? So I says to him, yeah, I says, Tanner, get paid. So he pays it, a few days there, he sell it for 60 pound. Uh-huh. Same fucking thing, eh? No Aye. About three years ago, Newcastle were playing in, in no, it'll be mayor, maybe it's about five years ago. I was drinking, I was on, having a drink at the time. See, five years ago, Saturday night, the tune was playing a fucking match. I'm sure it was a European match or something at the time. Anyway, it's half time. I says, the Susan, gun, click the kettle and I'll make a cup of tea. No, she said, I'm at the toilet. I says, clear the kettle and I'll make her a cup of tea. So she, she goes into the kitchen, such a fucking scream. Come on, I thought, oh. I says, what's the matter? She couldn't get the water. She's getting... <laughs> there was a fucking snake wrapped around the teapot. No tape. I says, what? Well, the, my sons had snakes when they were little garter snakes and whatnot. Nah, I always had them. So anyway. I says, get upstairs and get a pillar case. Comes down. Well, I, I took the snake off. It was body coloured snake. I didn't think it would be venomous, you know. <laughs> took it off and I lowers it into the fucking bag, see? I get some duct tape and I ties the duct tape round. She says, what are you going to do now? I says, well, I'll fill in the fucking RSPC or something. So I get through where well, you, you got to Bristol. That's the main deputy for the RSPC, yeah, the Carl Centre. I get to, and bearing in mind, this is about seven o'clock on a Saturday night. Uh, tells him what had happened. Snake wrapped around the tape. But where do you think that's come from? I said, I don't know. I said, the only thing, we've been shopping, we've been to a market at Blythe the day, and we've bought veg and fruit and whatnot. I'm just wondering, it was already in bags. I wonder if this has been in a bag. All oh, right, possibility, whatever. We'll send somewhere you to anyway. Fucking 20 to 10, this fucking white transit van pulls up outside the door. This character gets you the Mr. Armstrong, I'm such and such, look, RSPC, a bad Alice. You got a snake? I says, aye, come here, I'll show you. So you the fucking. It's on the floor in the kitchen. He says, come have a look at it. I says, aye, so I takes the fucking duct tape off and opens the pillowcase. 
I says, what kind is it? I says, who the fuck do I I'm not watching Stevens. I says, I'll, I'll hazard a guess and see it's a corn snake. I've seen corn snakes before. Oh. Right, just take the back up and he says, can I make a phone call? So he gets some more back up. He found this reptinologist or what they call them, who's clots over fucking snakes and reptiles. See, have you got any heat pads? He says, oh, he says, well, just put it in the tank with some heat pads and it'll be all right. Well, the, U the RSPC uses heat pads if they get into little heat chugs and what it is, for give a bit heat off in the tank. So anyway, he takes a fuck out here, but then it's about 10 o'clock. Next day, I was doing the tickets for the leak show at the Central Club in New York at dinner time. Fucking phone guns. The steward says, Neil, it's Susan on the phone. She against the phone, I says, what do you want? She says, I've had a woman docked at the door there this morning. Wait, well, on the Sunday morning, I, I was I, I called at my mother's and I was telling her the tale about the snake, see? Well, she had told uh, Betty, father down the street, about what the snake, you see? And this woman, it was uh, Ray Snail's widow, mm -hmm. lived two off the bottom, which is uh, 150 yards from my house. Her son, or grandson, had lost the snake three months ago, right? So she hadn't give it that to her front door. Susan answers the door. Hello, honey. Are you, are you found a snake? She says, aye. She says, she says, where is it? And she says, oh, the hospital's here. Took it away last night. She says, well, all I can see is you must keep a, a dirty house if, if it's been in your house for a month and you didn't know it was there. She says, dirty house. <laughs> she says, get in here and get... <laughs> well, Susan's out with a phone chart hoovering all the time yeah. and everything. It's, it's come through somehow, but you see, the backyard... We'll leave the back door open if, if Nancy wants to get in the yard and what. Oh, the door, we we'll have a locher. And so it could have come in that way. Yeah, but, but it bench, you know, where the teapot, where the uh, kettle is. It could come in any It must have, it must have come up the fucking right. stainless steel Ste thingy. Right. And it was wrapped around for the heat for on the on the mm. on the what do you call it? Right. For the heat, aye. We had a foot on it. It was yeah, She got it back. It. She got it back, you know. She threw it on the PC and they fetched it back for the laddie. So we you're old, old well, it ends with. What a one gun missing, it was a hint of fucking pain on the well. What was it? Aye. Fucking yeah. You know, we had one of them big iguanas, you know. We'll bear for it. And what it was, she didn't know, they had everything set, the heat pads, everything. Uh -huh. But you didn't know, you had to give them calcium. Ah. Uh, because. The heat, with the light. You must, aye. Uh, it's like an infrared. Aye, uh, aye. Uh, uh, infrared. Uh, uh, the UVI. Uh, uh, the UVI light. And plus, you've got to feed them. Calcium. Calcium into them. Right. So what happens if you didn't feed it, it takes the calcium out of its body. Right. And it stops it wagging. It's a deficiency. Aye. Aye. You know, it, with, with taking it, it takes it out of its tail, out of its bones, and Aye. everything like that. So it was poorly. We take it to the vets, you know, it fucking morbid. The vet injects it. With, like liquid calcium. Aye. So... She says, it's got to get another two or three doses. I forget now. She says, see if you're coming through here, I'll give you the needles with it in and give them it, you know, mm -hmm. like in the top of the tail. I says, well, I could do that, fuck her, you know, needles doesn't bother me. So I injects it, three times run, uh -huh. you know, like three days run. Uh -huh. And you could see the, the fucking iguana didn't, you know, it wasn't our happy with no, but. No. Well, I had it, you know, because oh, hey, oh, strong, I... mean, honestly. Oh, that's strong, I... It's huge, like, you know, about sea big. Mm. And I'm fucking, I'm lying on the couch this fucking night. He comes here, and the calcium had put him right again, you know. And it was up in more babe's bedroom. Uh -huh. It fucking come down the stairs. Oh. Into the fucking, like, where I was sitting watching the telly. Climbed up on the couch where I was, shit on us. Went back down on the floor and went away back up fucking stairs. Can someone back with you? Aye, uh, I thought you could. You pulled it round and out. Oh, and mine, they can shite them cunts, mine. Aye. Well, Paul had one four foot lang. Oh, he used aye. to let it out and he used to lie on the pelmet above the thingy. I says, What's him fucking marks? And well, he says, Yeah, I had a shite of the day. I see we got to wait and back <laughs> <it> up. <laughs> <laughs> what? what a marrow. 
They used to flee pigeons with we in the alley in the, the club. And he says to his wound, they had the loft over there, and he says, uh, Richie says, do you like goat's milk? I says, oh, I don't know. I says, I've never really tasted it, you know. I says, I've only had like cow's milk, you know. He says, do you fancy some? I says, well, you get out then. Because I thought it was good for like asthma, and that way Wallace is full of harassment, asthma, you know. Again, it's fucking goat's on the lawn over there. Huge fucking thing. He says, he had a teed, because it had great horns on it, you know. He says, he had a teed, I'll milk it. I had a fucking milk bottle. <laughs> he was trying to get this, and his fucking goat was nearly, yeah, I'm a fair size, and it it's was bugging me your boot, you know. fucking eyes used to go like that, didn't it, when you were milking it? <laughs> He's fucking milking it in this goat. <laughs> I thought it was a billy. It's fucking eyes, you know, it's fucking cross-eyed, you know, and you get milked. <laughs> Hey, fuck you, no, I see no lumps, the cunt. Lumps of fauna in the milk bottle, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, told him they went away up the Rosbury word name, can they remember with a snake? Well, oh, we're about fuck. snakes. <laughs> Tell him what happened with that cunt. One strike at the pit at the time. Fourteen, one strike. And it was a April, it was a fourth week in April, it was a sunny day like the day. So we went out, oh, couldn't get in the pit because it was, barriers was up. What we're going to do the day? I said, I'm fucked up there now. I'm at a loose end. We're going ferreting. We're going to wait all winter ferreting. Right. We're going to the garden. Oh, it's oh, right. a bunny in. How are we? How are we? How lad? Come on. Well, come, come on. on right. Come on. There's got a ring on, Richard. Right. It's so, a yellow fucker now. Yeah? Yeah, ring. Come on. Oh, he's so, weird. So we'll, we'll, we'll pick the ferrets up, we'll go on the way up the hill, and, and Jackie Nelson, God forbid, his deed now, he was fleeing the pigeons with, with Davy Wilson at the time. We'll call him school. School, we'll call him, because Anyway, three was gone, so we'll get up there about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And it was a lovely day, it was a fucking nice day. So we'll get the ferrets up, and we'll we open, get a few rabbits and whatnot. We'll come down off the hill about say at three o'clock as soon as we're still out we comes down and Jackie he was father down I, I, I says mate I'm shooting down mate are we are doing the car I'm just getting this furrowed out we'll, we'll come back along the path and come down I'll, we'll see you at the car right here so we'll get to the car he's, he's about a hundred yards in front of her he says come here come here come here there was a fucking rock you see lying and the snake he says there's a snake on the rock he says, look at it. Come here, have a look. So it was cold up. I know it was basking in the sun. So it was a boat. School says, what, what kind of snake is it? I says, it's a fucking grass snake. I says, the, the bairns used to have fucking garter snakes and whatnot. I've seen them before. He says, I still got that tank, what they used to be in. and Because it was in the, I had a fish tank. Vivarium. If that, if you've got a snake in, it's a vivarium. If it's got fucking fish in, it's a fish tank. I says, didn't wish you were still there. Gives it, man. I'll, I'll take the same for what Tracy, the lassie, you see. I says, right here. So I, I bends down, I kid you not, man. I wouldn't like you. Bends down, I picks it up, you see. She says, gives it here, gives it here. So it's fucking just like quietly coiling itself around his arm, you see. No, that has apparently A was bite on there. That's the bit the fucking bite man. They didn't bite on there, 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 or there. It's A was there. Not a grass snake in there. Uh, no, see anyway. <laughs> it fucking bites him on there, see? He can't Ah bastard I says, What's the matter? Well uh, when it's given it that on his arm, he says, Oh hey, we'll have a look for any more, maybe some more. So we're looking around, you see, and then he has ah turns around. He says, oh, it's bitters, it's bitters. I says, give away your soft bastard, what are you in about? And I bent down, I kid you not, and I picked it up again. Not a problem. I says, it's all right, man. I says, it's not harm you. He says, it's just the grass. You see, I says, really, you got grass here, I'm not harm you. He says, does it back? Does it fucking see him, mate? <laughs> well, what? Oh, look, me and Jack and him looking for another fucking grass snake. Bang! Bites him again. So that was two doers as he had on the fucking hand there, right? <laughs> Doctor, he says, Bass as well as again. I says, yes, so of course that you are. He says, as a fucking bag in the boot. Get it out and put it in the bag. So it was a fucking bean line, I say. 
Neil, this is the thought of Neil's picked it up, but by then I picked it up by the fucking tail and I lowered it into the back, tied the back. Gets the flask out, couldn't see any mass snakes lying about. Gets the flasks out, Got, I took a bit of sandwich and whatnot out with So I pours the fucking tears out and whatnot. This is about five minutes later. He says, Oh, that fucking hand's sore, lad. I says, he is soft bastard, what are you on about? So we drink, he says, oh, that fucking tea you here? He says, we're going to the hospital to see the fucking doctor. He says, that cunt's stiffening up, I'm telling you. About 20 minutes went by before we come away from there and get to the entrance of where Al Whitten is. There's a flock of fucking sheep on the rear of the fuck shepherds holding the sheep along. I says, wait a minute, I have a crack with this shepherd. I says, come here, lad. Have a look at this. I opens a bag, boot, bag. Oh, he says, it's another. He says, it's another. I says, it's bit my mara twice. Oh, he says, you let attempt to the hospital. He says, it could be serious sad. I, I says, where's the nearest doctor? He says, down the bottom of the village. Just drive straight to the bottom, big house on it, right? He says, you don't need to fucking tell us a hold him, get in, get in. <laughs> so anyway, he could, by the time we got to the doctors, his fucking hand was like that. The fingers were like that, sausages. <laughs> oh, he couldn't, and that was fucking black, man, there. We had that bit. The fucking doctor was a wee old on Kel, wasn't he? So we were taking later, his wife got him on the pier jam, got gets him back. I says, I've got the snake in the bag. And he looks, he says, oh, I just put it in that empty bin. He says, I'll keep that for that job and get a stick and kill it. He says, often I've heard bites occasionally during the summer months with people coming up camping and whatnot. He come out, he had his arm like that, bandaged up on his fucking neck, right? And he had this fucking carrier bag with tablets in. I'm not joking, there was fucking thousands of tablets in this fucking bag. <laughs> I says, oh, what do you got there? He says, what have I got fucking yeah? He says, he in your fucking grass snake. He says, I've got to take these fucking tablets, seven a day. I says, all right, all right. So anyway, why well, I couldn't drive at the time. <laughs> Jack couldn't drive. He's in the fucking back. School was the driver, but he was tied up with one hand, fucked with a snake. He says, he let a change gear. All the way back, he's saying, right, and I was changing gear from fucking Alwinton <laughs> back to Newbegin. We get back, pulls up the gardens, I comes up, puts the ferrets away, gets to him, gets the car locked. She come out, Helen. What's happened? What's happened? I says, been a bit of a snake. A snake? I says, I twice. <laughs> fucking eh? <laughs> so anyway... The next day, that was five five o'clock at night, six o'clock. The next day, I'm working up the Lotmans, and he's, he's talking to my uncle, my uncle Jim, who had the garden next to Freddie Greer. And he's got his fucking arm down his rope, like that, see? And I, I'm like working towards the two of them. And he cries, Oh, here he is. Here's David Bell, me coming up, look. I <laughs> grasp me, it. I, oh, I, I, I. I says, God, look, so that the day. <laughs> it was fucking black and blue up here, mate. Mm. From that. Oh. Read me up there. I says, look, so that. He says, so. He says, I couldn't, I couldn't bear the pain last night, man. He says, I had to get over the road and get Robert Hepburn to run to the hospital. He says, about nine o'clock last night. He says, I gans up and casually. And he says, I had this letter off the doctor from Alwyn and thought to give the fucking GP. But he says, I took the wheels to show this. He was a Pakistani doctor, this guy, at the Ashton Hospital. He said, what you do? You broke arm. No, I've been bit by a snake. You bit by a snake? He says, I have been bit. He says, you know, where I come from, you get bit by a snake. You go, poof, you are dead. <laughs> <laughs> he told him, he says, if you... If you if you are eat them all morning, you'll be okay. He <laughs> stopped the work all night and watched videos all night. He didn't want to do his hour. He was fucking knackered when he came to the garden. He was all the night, you know. He says, I've had no fucking sleep. My arm's fucking aching. He says, a dab cunt says, if I, if I get through the night, I'll be all right. <laughs> it was a, a he was a fucker for a fortnight. He was a fucker for air. Uh, 
practical jokes, weren't they? Aye. Uh, <laughs> well, Jai, his marrow was a bit short-sighted a bit, you know. Yeah. And he had these fucking panties. And he says to him this day, they had a slug gun, you know. And he says, Jai, there's some pheasants getting in the garden, yeah. He says, shut the cuts. He says, because he used to be a good shot in the war, no, wasn't he? He says, hey, he says, I was top man. So he says, I'll do it for you, he shut. But he wasn't putting any slugs in, you know, and they were Aye. fucking banties. Not banties. And he, Jack, he was going, yeah, I can't understand who I'm not fucking shut. There was any slugs in the cooking shut. <laughs> yeah, he used to do some half. He took some worms up, he was gone fishing. So he's digging the worms and he's putting them in a jar. So Jack, he fucking comes and chopper. Aye, mate, up, aye. The booth comes to the garden. What are you doing? He says, look at he had a jar full of worms. He says, I'm sick of buying these bastards. He says, no, this is another jar of bout that I'm putting into the garden for to make the garden good for ye cunts. Uh-huh. And the guards, oh, well, you should have told me we would have bought the worms. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, he used to come up with some crackers. He used to come up with some Aye. Well, Chip. Aye. Uh-huh. 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 Where I was at work, where Chet would be looking after the boats for us, sometimes on a race day where I couldn't get because we would be hands and that, you know. And he would fucking wait till where Chip wasn't looking. And we'd start shooting at the boards, you know. Oh, uh, well, I don't know where Chip would come around and fucking knock now, we out, you know. And he twigged her and he uh, said, You skinny <laughs> bastard, I'll fucking kill you. Uh, he used to do it all the time, didn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, I left it. Ah, well, again. Oh, wait. Oh, you fucker. <laughs>